in your Hosseini library. Uh, today is the beginning of the creative writing course uh, organized by the center and the library. Uh, and given by Mr. Ibn Lari, the lecturer of the Islamic University of Gaza, and you are uh, familiar with him. Uh, and he teaches creative writing at various institutions in the Gaza Strip, uh, including the Strip. So this is not the first course we have all this. Okay. The course will go on uh, for six meetings, so, sorry, five meetings, uh, three hours each. Saturdays, Mondays, and uh, Wednesdays. Uh, one important thing, please um, come on time because some of you came late and had to start late today. For next time, please come on time and do participate if you have questions and comments because this course is not just you know, about lecture, it's about interaction and uh, you have to uh, play uh, more control in this. Uh, I'll stop here. Uh, Okay, uh, let's at the beginning uh, play a game. I want each one of you to uh, tell me your name and use a word, an adjective, to describe yourself. But the word has to be, to begin with your own initial. For example, my name is Rifat, and the word that might describe me most is roaming. You got the game? So my name is Rifat, uh, and roaming describes me. Maybe you will know, maybe you will not know why it does what does not describe me. So yeah, if you have something in mind, we can start or we can start from here. Yes, my name is Nida Chakura, and um, uh, I can say that's nice. Nice. Yeah. Thank you, Nida. Next. I'm Nira Khabashir. Also nice. Yeah, okay. exactly. Nice. Can you use something else? Um, okay. Narrative? Narrative? Not bad. For a creative writing class. Next. My name is Hanam Hinson. I'm, I'm a very honest person. Honest? Very good. My name is Hana Abdalou. Also honest. Wow. Yes. We need to start something else. Happy? Happy. See you. Cool. Next. My name is Sabine Hamouda. Uh, I don't have any. <laughs> you should have. It's a uh, thing. Something in the beginning of S. An adjective, a word, a noun, a verb. It doesn't I'm surpri to. surprised now. <laughs> you, you are surprised? Yeah. Good. Next. My name is Lina Musaid. I can say that I'm a little you are like a light. You associate more with light. Adjectives are, are a lot better, of course, for the nature of the game, but anything is okay. And my name is Mario Khmer, and uh, my word is um, ambitious. Ambitious? How does ambitious or ambitious? You're my mom, right? Yeah. <coughs> What's ambitious? <laughs> Do we have a word in the English language called being ambitious? Ambitious. Ambitious. Yeah, ambitious, yeah. yeah. But you just don't have something in mind, so you just make I up a word. Too. Make up some. Can you make up words in English? Can you coin words and phrases in English? Yes. And that's something beautiful about the English language. You can always make up words, and they become yours. If you want to register them under your name, you just send it, send the word to Google to uh, or something. That is something 
uh, good. Put it in mind because you usually, uh, and probably you know this about Shakespeare already. Shakespeare made up like more than a thousand words. Shakespeare considered himself bigger, bigger than the English language itself. When he was in a position where he couldn't find a suitable rhyme or rhythm, he would just twist the word, change it from a verb to a noun or a noun to a verb, or just sometimes bring new words to the English language and new expressions. As creative writers, sometimes, this must not be a habit, but sometimes you need to make up words. Next. That's a tough thing here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know many words beginning with the Z letter or Z? Zebra. Zealous. Oh. In its positive meaning, of course. Yeah. Or zeal. You know zeal? Zeal, like the desire to do something. Zealous could be used in a negative, uh, like an extremist or something, sometimes. Unless you're zealous about something. Use it. Uh, my name is Yusuf Jamal and I am undecided. Well, how? Like, do you want me to write it with a U? <laughs> or you don't know yourself? Do you know yourself? No. You don't? Still sketchy. Ah. Something beginning with a U? No. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But that's also a uh, the sound is yeah. I have a the silent better, it's okay. Now had had a minute in get a nice, it's okay. I'll have to know the initial sound. Or the initial letter, it's okay. So unique begins with the yes sound, but it begins with the no, uh, no, unique. Yeah. Give them a new transcription. Oh, will you long? This is the yet sound. The yet. The yet sounds like Yusuf. You know, this is important to know. If you don't know this, it creates trouble for you. Like for, we say, for example, a unit. Well, an unit. If it begins with a vowel sound, a university, yes, a university. A university. No, it's the sound. The sound is ya, and the ya is a semi vowel sound. It's not. Next. English student. Can you describe yourself with a word beginning with your initial M, letter, or sound? There are many. Uh, movie, maybe. Moody. Moody. Oh. Moody. Moving. Moving is moving, but moving is also important to describe a piece of writing. When you say uh, uh, the story is moving, yes. it makes you cry or want to cry. Yes. I was moved by his story. Doesn't mean you moved from A touched to B. It means it touched, touched your heart. heart. Thank you for this. It touched my heart. It touched something in in my mind or, or heart. Uh, my name. My name is Anas Nazli. I can say. Ambiguity. Ambiguous? Um, ambiguous. Anger. No, choose one. Ambiguous. Are you ambiguous? To some of. You're vague, you just like an iceberg mm -hmm. where there is a lot, much <coughs> deep than on the surface. Do you know everything about him, about us? No. <laughs> no. Not much? <laughs> no. So you must There's be something yes. He's secretive. Yes. He's secretive. He's not like an open book. Secretive. Yes. Uh, my name is Mohammed Adiyah. Um, I think my word is uh, optimistic. No, 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 no. Choose one that begins with uh, the M letter. Um. 
Will you initial? Ma. Magic. Magical? Yeah, magical. Maybe. Magic. Are you a magician? You know, in a in a way. Oh, no, are you a magician with words? Something like that. The way you, you communicate with people, the way you can easily trick people into treating you, buying stuff for you, for example, or making them do stuff for you, no. give you their homework. Because this also requires magic, the magic of words, the magic of persuasion and convincing. Like, he made me do it. I don't know how, but he made me. He has a way with words. The guy is a magician. And? Uh, my name is Ibrahim al -Rantisi. My word is invisible. Invisible? Oh. I think uh, unobserved is more uh, descriptive than invisible. But because of the eye. Because of the, of the eye. But no, still, invisible is a very powerful word. Visibility, invisibility. Do you know Harry Potter and the yes. invisibility cloak? Yes. Visible. By the way, visible is a word that comes originally from vision. Yeah. Like seeing. Vision. Why are you invisible? Why could you? Do you choose to be invisible or are you naturally invisible? or? Uh, I'd like to do my activities in shadow. I don't like shadow. to be oh. under the... Uh, control. Yeah. You prefer to be. I, I feel like more free oh. to do what I want. Oh. Interesting. So it doesn't have to be negative if you are invisible, if you're not seen by others, if you just choose to be somewhere in the shadow, the shadow of things, events, or people. Yes. Interesting. Okay, I want you to think of this. Listen, this doesn't have to be you, because you is, of course, a lot bigger than this. But this has to, uh, of course, you just brought out the word that came to your mind first. But psychologically speaking, this could have something to tell about you. Or even, like, it's more important than this. This might make you think more of this particular trait or feature in yourself. What I mean is that uh, when we speak things up to ourselves, if you attend motivational lectures or watch motivational videos and this, it's just first thing in the morning, you just wake up, uh, stand in front of the mirror and, and say, I can't do it, I can't do it, um, you know, right? Yeah. I'm going to win, uh, it's an easy course, I'll do it. If you talk to yourself, this, psychologically speaking, influences the way you behave. Sure, because and thoughts influence actions. Exactly. Yeah. At the same time, if you adopt a negative perspective or a, a negative attitude about yourself or people or life, you're never going to change. Like somebody who wants to learn to drive a car. And deep in his or her heart, she or he believes that she okay. will never ever be able to drive. How are you going to change? You're not going to change because in your heart you tell yourself, but I can't. I, I can't. can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. You go, you take your driving lessons and everything, but deep in your heart. So I need to begin with this. Your attitude about yourself, about people, about uh, life, and more importantly, to be specific here, about driving and about uh, creative writing in specific. There are so many people who believe that they will never be able to be good writers. We need to change this. Writing is a skill. It's not something you born with. It's not, it's not like your hand, that you can't grow or regrow one. Writing is a skill, it's like... Something can be trained. You can train to write. By practice, by, by yes. trial and error. 
Writing is a skill that can, by the way, that can be improved and can be lost. If you keep practicing, you're going to improve. We'll speak about this probably in, in more detail, but we, I want to be more practical. So the first thing I want you to, and of course once, because you're here, tells me that you have taken the decision to improve your writing, your creative writing skills. Please, in, a, in, in addition to that, in your heart, tell yourself that I can be a writer. And believe me, no writer, no writer, no matter how famous or how important, was born a writer. They became writers because their life, their attitude, in a way or another, pushed them to this particular uh, direction. And you're here today because you want your life, your course of life to be, in a way or another, pushed towards probably a career in writing. Think of yourself as an amazing, important, cool, famous, bestseller uh, author in the future, as a novelist, a short story writer, as a poet, as a journalist, as a dramatist. Think of yourself as such. And again, believe me, nobody, no, like, I'm not sure who your best uh, writers are, like, probably, I don't know, J.K. Rowling, uh, Susanna Bulhawa, Hassan Kanafani, Mahmoud Darwish, uh, Hemingway. I understand. Mm -hmm. Like, <coughs> those people began writing even later in their lives, probably, and there are people who just started writing and started publishing after they became 40 or 50. So we still have a lot of time, plenty of time. But we don't want to wait until we are 50 or, or, or 40. We know in Arabic about the Nabi, right? Yes. There are many people who call Nabi. Why? Because he started writing poetry, amazing poetry later in life. One of them started writing excellent poetry after uh, 40. Uh, there is also an Arab, po an Arab poet who like kept writing for years and years and all his poetry was crap, was horrible. But he never gave up. Because he believed that one time it's going to be there. He's going to write something. And this something is going to be published. <laughs> he wrote a lot of horrible poetry and finally he wrote good poetry and that's the rule. So in this course, we want to train and practice, and at the same time, develop this attitude towards writing. And believe me, creative writing is one of the most beautiful things you can be involved in in your life. It's like, like inventing something. Or probably reinventing something, but still. When you write a short story, it's like you, you have being endowed with this ability to create new people. Because sometimes these people in your story become real friends or characters. People uh, you quote, people you, that people that move you in a way or another. If you're watching TV shows, for example, Friends, you know so many people who are a lot into Friends. And one, one guy once told me, I grew up with friends and I felt that they were my best friends. They are fictional. Yes, they are on TV, but they're fictional characters. And every time I see him, I remember what he told me, that I feel that they are my friends. I feel that, like, in a way, I, I made these people my friends. I quote them. I laugh when I remember something funny. I feel sad when I remember something that said that happened, that happened uh, uh, to them. Okay? So please, uh, uh, as a beginning, uh, never give up on writing. The positive self-talk, honestly. Yeah. Say again? The positive self-talk. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Changing your attitude. Yes. You Changing your attitude. And this applies to writing, it. to English, to everything. I can do it. Yes. Practice. Yeah, practice, yeah, practice makes yeah. perfect the, Read the adage. We, we talk about how to do this, and reading is a very important, 
important thing here uh, to do. No one is better than you. If you take the decision and work on your own, you on your skills. My first question, a question that I always begin with, uh, I don't want to erase this. Okay, why are you here, or why we write, or why do you want to write? Why do you write? Now, I want everyone to tell me something, a sentence, a statement. Uh, why have you chosen to come here to join this creative writing course? Why, if you write already, why do you write? Or if you want to improve your writing skills, why do you do that? Beginning with uh -huh. Ibrahim. Yeah, he tried to be invisible, but I saw him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think writing uh, is a great way to express yourself, your okay. deep feelings. Uh, Thank you. Writing is self-expression. Yes. Self-expression. I express myself. There is this need deep inside me. There is this thing. It's like... It's the very opposite of going to the loo. Like you get the best out of yourself. No matter how dark it is. Okay? So when you talk, when you write, especially when you write, because when you say when you say things to people, speaking is probably the most important uh, thing we do, right? Because we communicate mainly in speaking. But speaking is usually something that if not recorded might be forgotten. We might not we might forget the way the exact way it was said and how it was said. But writing lives forever. Yes. Do you know Aesop? Mm -hmm. Aesop. The very famous fable teller. The guy lived more than two thousand years ago. كل القصص اللي نسمعها الأسد والفار والأرنب والسلحفاة والهذا اكتبوا Aesop's Fables بالمناسبة في كتاب موجود it's important to read Aesop كأنه بعض الناس بيقولوا عنه أصله Ethiopian or something African كان he was a slave and he was in Greece I think he was asked to tell stories to the little ones and he used storytelling to educate Almost every story we hear about now, the funny, allegorical, fable stories about animal char characters doing stuff, tricking each other, or they are like more than 2,000 years old. Can you imagine that? Crazy, right? For writing outlives every probably other uh, experience. Next, um, convey something to the reader. You want to or convey a message. To this, your thoughts, beliefs. You want to reach out to people, probably around you, and people across time and place. Always think of this. When you write... You have a message. There's a message. There's something... I, I was reading something about Shakespeare and those great, great writers. When they were writing, did they think that they were writing great literature? Some people say no, not necessarily. And كل شيء عبوط بقصيدة بعدها بعد ألف سنة بتعيش كل الناس تقرأ أو تدرس أو إلى آخره. Did he really? Did she really realize that this is going to be an amazing text, an important text, fifty years later, five hundred years later, a thousand years later? Usually yes. A guy like Shakespeare knew, and we know. Uh, from Sonnet 18, so long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, this the text, my writing, my poetry, my literature, and this gives life to thee. Probably then you. So when you write, think of your future self. Think of your future, uh, like your kids in the future. Think of Palestine in 100 years, 50 years, 200 years, 500 years. And think of your writing as something that's going to be studied at university or... You don't have to, no pressure, but what we write is going 
شنك الشاعر العربي يقول لك فلا تكتب بكفك غير شيء يسرك في القيامة أن تراه طبعا الكلمة تطبق على الكلام على الكتاب but writing outlays so you want to convey a message yes. I am here to improve or to learn a new style of writing mm. creative writing and, this, and that is different from academic style writing. okay very good uh, at university we only learn to write yeah, academic writing this style, academic writing. this style can help me to uh, write a story our life a story yeah. of our life so uh, academic writing paragraph essays say, uh, and everything very important there is yani, we don't have a totally different way of writing fiction or non-fiction but there are different because when you write academically you have to be to the point you have to be the structure, uh, you have to be clear Control simple short words. to the point unambiguous but in creative writing you can choose to be so many things you can write something that has different messages can you spend a week just analyzing and reading it and everybody has opinion because this is literature this is creative in creative you don't say things directly and Shakespeare can be can I go I am a good poet and you should fall in love with me because the poetry I write about you makes will make you live forever because I'm cool he, should, he could have said that. And that would be easy, right? Yes. But this thing, if he said it that way, probably it will go unnoticed by people. Next. Okay, to improve my uh, English skills language. And uh, the writing is effective way against, uh, against uh, Israeli occupation. Okay. So, it has to do with English. Can you improve your English language skills when you learn to write creatively? Yes, of course. Because it's going to open up new horizons and scopes for you. But writing here is a way of, it's, it's political. Yes. Yeah. Writing is political because, in a way, it's a, it's a means of resistance. Yeah. It's a way to reach out to people, to express ourselves, to write a message, to write differently, to tell our stories, and to resist an occupation that is destroying our lives. Very interesting. Um, I write because writing is an act of courage. So you're telling me you're courageous? <laughs> Are you alluding to that? How dare you? <laughs> Writing is an act of courage. Yes, thank you, Yusuf, for saying this. Although he, he just stole it from Rawan Yahi, but he is right. What do you mean that uh, writing is an act of courage? Maybe I write something. Um, someone. Oh my god, this is embarrassing. I'm not going to show this to anybody. People are going to devour me. We feel this. Yes. Uh, I want to write, there's something inside me that wants to get out and be written, but hmm, people are going to be laughing at me. I don't want to be in a position where people laugh at me. So if you break all these psychological barriers and you just write, listen, everybody, you know Shakespeare, just said Shakespeare, and Mahmoud Darwish, the greatest Palestinian poet, right? There are people who hate Mahmoud Darwish and his poetry, and there are people who hate Shakespeare and his poetry. No matter what you do, what you write, how perfect you are, there will be haters. Right? And haters, sometimes because they just hate, uh, they see me rolling, they hate him. Actually, they see me rolling. Because they, I, I work, I do, I achieve, because I'm cool, they hate. Because of jealous part of him. Yeah, sometimes. But don't take every negative criticism, we'll talk about this, and feedback as hate oh. and jealousy. 
please don't. And not sure if you know me, familiar with me or not, I, my most important method of, of teaching and training is feedback. And if you don't get this feedback, you will never learn. And that's why so many of us finish university without being like competent. And we don't have four years of complete, and not once we get feedback, not on a paragraph, not on a pronunciation. And that's horrible. We should seek feedback. So we, I'll give feedback. If I tell you, wow, that's a good writing, but why do you insist on using big, big words? Don't take that as an insult. We're here as a family. Think of it. Whatever I say, it's just to raise, to make you raise questions. And think of the way you do. Next. Writing is healing. Writing is healing. Yes. So many people are cheating today. <laughs> How is writing healing? Can you explain, please? The next one. <laughs> so it's just something Yusuf told you? Yeah. How is writing healing? Maybe you can't uh, speak and the people can't hear you. You can express your beliefs or your emotions by writing. I can heal your feeling. How? Uh, sometimes you have uh, a deep sadness inside you and you can't get rid of this uh, sadness until you write your story. Very good. Writing helps release the wrath inside, the destructive nature of our reactions to things. Start from punching bags, what a Yes, you punching bag. And it could be used metaphorically. And I say in the lecture, the student uses a punching bag. I'm going to talk about the point where he uses it and uses it. So I'm going to talk about it. Okay, I'm going to talk about it. And he's my punching bag. These are the best students, by the way. They do fun in the lecture, in the lecture, and the end. And I don't punch physically. I'm not allowed to. But I just crack jokes and and I release some of the tension in the class. Can I, I remember one of the of my teacher at secondary school was a really really tough teacher. Like we feared him, like literally we were like shaking in his class. But once in a while he would as a big bad Whenever he's in the class, just. But now everybody would be laughing. It's like, wow. It's not that funny, but because it comes from this always frowning, always, you know, guy, it would just crack. So this. Thing, uh, if you have, if you go to a shrink, said that we don't have counselors and shrinks and people just to talk to when we are sad, when we're. Uh, I'm, I'm told we have, I think, at the Islamic University, he will call it just the title, just not all. Shun al Tullah. Sarang dum al an fi morshida, morshida. You just go talk to them, and it's very confidential. It's very important. We don't have this here, sadly. That's why you usually. Seek friends. You tell your friends about your pain. You tell this to people you trust. And once you speak out, you pour yourself out, you feel relieved. The tension is relieved, and, re and the, the, the anger is also released. Because if you keep it inside, you're going to implode. Writing is an important means of healing and releasing the anger, the destructive uh, like feelings and emotions and reactions. Uh, when you feel angry about something, you just want to break things sometimes. You want to hit people. A very important way to just avoid being physically harmful to others, just go and write. Of course, avoid slander and everything. Just 
Uh, excuse me, but what if we don't have so much vocabulary to write in English? We'll talk about this. Writing, especially creative writing, has nothing to do with the amount of vocabulary you have. We'll talk about this. I'll give you I'll give you a hundred short stories. Well, like like some of the most important stories around the world. You will read them all, and not one word is going to be difficult for you. Writing is not about how we can uh, how sophisticated your vocabulary is or how big your words. We'll come to this. Okay. <coughs> Never worry, worry about about words, about vocabulary, even about grammar. Sometimes, like at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And if you had when you want to be published. There's something called editing, and editors do this. It doesn't mean it's good to know words, no expressions, but don't just write the word because it feels big and sophisticated, and it's going to make you look cool. It's not about that at all. Yes. Words help. Word uh, choice also helps. Why you choose this over this? We we'll talk about this. But a very important question next. There's a way to express yourself. A way to express yourself? True. Ah. It's okay. If it's been said, it's okay. It could be your opinion. Next, Madam. Um, Ambitious. Okay. Uh, I think we, we are living in a, in a time where words are very, very valuable. So, uh, very valuable or? Or to affect others or to, to pass a message oh, yeah. or to uh, persuade somebody to... This is an advanced right? point here. Somebody here said, I want to convey a message. Yeah. But yeah, but no, I want my message to change people. So we need to be careful to choose our words. But can you answer this question? <coughs> Not Yusuf, of course, because Yusuf knows some of the answers. When you write, who's the most important party? Party ka ايش بنسميها؟ لا 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 متوقع عقل بسموه party طرف يعني طرف في ال في العقل. Who's the most influenced party? Yeah, true. But I think it's yourself. It's the writer. Yeah. When you write, ah uh, Yusuf, when you write, you grow. You like literally, like like not physically. But you grow, you change, you learn, you develop, you evolve. When you write, you discover undiscovered areas about yourself, your life, your past. Believe me. And sadly, we also don't practice this, something called free writing. What's free writing? Just write anything that comes to your mind. Yeah, for example, I, I, if I tell you, write something about something that happened long time ago between you and your grandma. And you barely remember her. So, okay, uh, in this exercise, I'm supposed to feel right about me and my grandma. My grandma died like 15 years ago. I can barely remember her. What should I write about my grandma? I'm not sure because I was only a kid then. But I'm sure that my grandma was a really, really great cook. She would make the best dishes ever. Oh yeah, I think once I was crying early in the morning and probably, I'm not sure why, maybe I was eaten by one of my uh, older brothers. And she called for me and, I, and you start digging in your past. You start literally digging in your past in your heart, in your memory. So in so many ways, writing changes people, reaches out for people to change them. Especially creative writing. Don't you cry sometimes when you read a very moving piece, story, or is, don't you feel angry, don't you feel yeah. sad or happy? Yes, it's, it, by the way, it's similar to the way we, we react to movies and TV shows. In the first intifada, we watched a lot of Hollywood movies. A lot of them. And in the first intifada, like, we were kids, but we were tough kids. Because we would spend most of the time throwing stones and fighting, you know, the occupation. Like, literally fighting them. And then in the movie, I feel like 
Mm. Weeping. But no. Uh, even weeping sometimes. It gets to your heart. One of my supervisors is Indian, my PhD is in presence, is Indian, and I, she was surprised when I told her that Palestine, the first Palestinian Intifada was a lot influenced by uh, uh, Indian movies like Hollywood. It's true. I mean, Tabit Chan and Abdul Khan and those people, they were like, uh, there's a movie called uh, uh, The Coolie or the, Por the Porter Attack. I think we watched this like 50 times. Very beautiful movie. P film, it's more. It's about three kids, I think, were they? Twins? Three kids that are like the brothers and they are separated at birth. And they go, one is brought up by a Muslim family, a uh, Christian family, and the third is brought up by uh, I'm not sure if it's a Sikh family or they grow up. What is the name of the movie? I think that was the name of the movie. A very beautiful movie. The message is really powerful. Uh, usually these messages are not available in, in, uh, in American movies. I could be different. Very beautiful movie. So think of you writing as this kind of experience where you want to change others, but remember, don't be unfair to yourself. Writing is also about changing you to the better because you have to grow when you read, when you write. Next. Uh, for me, when I write either I want to deliver a message or something I dislike or I want, mm. I think about very good. So again, we go back. And by the way, we have like three people saying expressing because most opinions are about is writing a self-expression. Is it yeah. self-expression or something else? So it's mostly self-expression. Next. Uh, I'm here to Oh, we have a new aspect here. We have somebody introducing gender. Whether in the form of feminism or whether in the form of mm -hmm. female voices reaching out to, uh, to people. Is that something? Yes. Because when you, so many people say, when you want to write, try to know something about yourself, like your identity. Asking, why am I writing? Who am I? Who am I? The identity. Sometimes we live. Sometimes, we, by the way, you don't have to know. This identity crisis itself is something. But I want to reach out to people as a Palestinian living under occupation, as a female living in Gaza. So this is going to influence your topics and the perspectives. How you tackle your topics. Very good. Next. From the psychological point of view, uh, from the psychological side, I I feel as whenever I write, uh, I feel better than before. Hmm, that is very connected to the point here, but it's very very interesting that you s like uh, like you say you feel that you are changing. We usually don't. But if you feel it, it's like feeling yourself physically growing up. Like there are, I have a friend who like who likes to look at the sea. Literally, I feel that I have a bit of sight when I look at the sea. Like I can feel it. If you feel it, it's beautiful. I can feel that, like there's something, like when you memorize new words, I can feel it. Like when you memorize new words, I can feel it. Like when you memorize new words, I can feel it. Like when you memorize new words, I can feel it. 
لك في ناس بحس قرقعة في خلايا مخ بحس انه صار ازاحة وسع على كلمة زيل بين كلمة كذا It's beautiful When you write, you feel something It's important But By the way, if you don't feel Now that we say that sometimes people feel You might start feeling And that's the beautiful of talking and listening to others And reading others Next You want to solve the problems And figure what is right and what is wrong Oh, you want to teach Isn't this one of the most important uh, things about writing? Being didactic, mm -hmm. to teach and delight. You studied this already, most of you. Writing literature has to has to, do to teach and, and delight. Yes, there's pleasure. Not the pleasure we have from drinking no. this. Pleasure with pleasure words. Of pleasure. pleasure of mind. This self-esteem is the thing you feel inside, not from eating ice cream or, or stuff, but pleasure. You get when you feel that you can contribute, you can do something, that you can be different, you can yeah, grow. I feel, I feel, yeah. But also this teaching thing has to be two, a two-way thing. And I want to teach people and at the same time I want to teach myself yes, to educate others. And, and I usually say as Palestinians we have a moral obligation to write and to write back to educate people around the world and to educate ourselves. Because you don't have, you don't need to claim to be in a, a, a higher moral ground where you just lecture people. No. If you just want to lecture people, you know, lecture people, just lecture look exactly. down upon others. Mm -hmm. good. But one important thing here, writing doesn't have to solve problems. Sometimes it shows you the way. That's why some people choose their stories to be open-ended. You just want the writer to be involved, the reader to be involved, to be part of what you write. To, you just want to involve them, to engage them, you want them to be uh, responsible people, to make decisions, to decide for themselves. And usually we say writing is more about raising questions than finding answers. If you read Harry Potter, for example, may maybe we do this sometimes. You read a letter, a uh, verse from the Quran or a hadith, or you, you watch a movie about friendship, and then you feel bad about what you did to one of your friends. So, you talk to them and say, hey, I'm sorry. But did the book tell you, go apologize for your friend if your friend no. wronged you? No. Just showed you something, raised questions about the importance and the beauty of, of friendship and having friends and how important it is and that life is horrible without friends, without friends you trust and who trust you. Next. Uh, I want to learn how to write creatively in order not to be able, in order to not to be discombobulated or perplexed whenever someone asks me how your day was or uh, how something looked like mm. in order to be able to use idioms, expressions to, to express uh, my feelings, to mm. describe the uh, stuff, uh, to describe things. Okay. And such. But again, let's go back to vocabulary here. It, writing is not about idioms and expressions and words. Although I, uh, Pol Polonius asked Hamlet what he was reading and Hamlet was like, words, words, words. Because words, this is our language, right? And it's interesting how here you want to use it as, uh, as a part of yourself to, when you communicate with others. We just want to be able to express yourself to be creatively, to be, to be confident. Writing usually does this. Next. Okay. I choose to come, or to come here uh, because I want to be a useful member in the so on my society, mm -hmm. uh, and I suppose there are ideas um, that writing express feelings and thoughts, uh, and by the writing you you can persuade the others of your vision or your opinions. Uh, so one of the qualities I I think one of the qualities of the writer is to have a persuasive skills like mm -hmm. this. Interesting. 
there's somebody here who wants to be a positive contributor in the society. You want to be a good citizen. A citizen that can contribute. And that is important. Because right, we have writers who could, could be destructive to the society. But listen, there is a kind of destruction that is important and necessary. You distract to construct. Probably you study this in, in literary theory, there's something called deconstruction. What's deconstruct? You, you can't build a good thing unless you just destroy it and begin again. Begin new. A new. So sometimes, as a writer, you could destroy things, destroy uh, attitudes, concepts. You could expose these weaknesses in your society. And maybe you will be attacked. You, your job is to provoke, to raise questions. That's my job. Tiffany, I'm going to know. My job, like I had to get up, I can go low. But it's a chatter, yellow, like Nike is over. Right? The ball is in your court. Court of Manak, yellow. My job is to raise questions. And of course, we know it's usually easier to raise questions than find answers. We could, we might have time to speak about some of these elements in detail, but. I try to avoid to because we want to make this more about writing and practicing. Finally? Yes, uh, besides that I want to write to say who I am. Mm -hmm. I want to reflect my Palestinian Islamic hum humanitarian identity, personality. Uh, since I wanted to be a journalist mm -hmm. before like um, registering in English department, so I want to be something like in this side, political. So writing as a political tool, as a political uh, means of expression reflect to our, reflect yeah, upon our, our lives our as lives, yeah. Palestinians. And she wants to use this uh, for herself as, as a journalist. Okay, interesting. I'm very pleased to get these very deep, really, very deep and profound uh, answers. It shows that you understand uh, the depth and the nature of what writing, and especially creative writing, could be and, uh, and could do. Uh, Anything before we begin with an exercise of a piece of writing? Okay. No question? No comment? <coughs> if writing uh, is important, like we all agree here, and essential. What are the most important tools of writing? Imagination. Number one, imagination. What is the imagination? Imagination is like a state of mind. Okay. To express what you have experienced before, and you depend on the past. You just let your mind to go. Away. Go. Like, you know? You wander. Like you wander around, hang around. In, what, in, in the possible and impossible. In the real and un unreal. In the factual and the fictional. Imagination. And we get imagination, by the way, like, can we develop our feelings? Put up Allah and Agni. Yeah, you can improve this. Just watch. Watch. We watch TV all the time. When you watch movies or TV shows or cartoon, cartoon is the best and the most important thing about developing your imagination. If you watch a movie, for example, try to stop somewhere before the ending and try to imagine an ending to it. Try to be creative in the way you look at things. And we know kids are the most creative when they before they go to to the nursery school. 
لما يجي يفتح بال بده يطعم البيت يروح على النيرسري سكول ذا كيد لوزيز اباوت 90% اوف هيز اور هير كرياتيفيتي اند ايماجينيشن يا عارفين ليش؟ بصير هو يتعلم اتس افاكت باي ذا واي لانه انت في الدار يو دو ايفري ثينج ذا واي يو لايك يو دريس ذا واي يو لايك يو بيهيف ذا واي يو لايك بس لما يو جو تو سكول اور تو ذا سكول ذير ار سم ريسبكتس ذير ار رولز رولز يس So we want, in order, in order to be creative, we want to be to get rid like of kids. Yeah. Get rid of all these rules, at least momentarily, if you are into rules. So should we keep our kids at home? Ah, in America, there's something called you've seen it. In England, America, it's called homeschooling. Homeschooling. When the child is in the dark, some people say that homeschooling is better. It's not better, but in so many ways, Seriously. Like as a father or brother or mother or whatever, just to... You can't control, of course. No, 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 you just make sure to... Go ahead. Make him conscious of the... Yes, we hear bad things, but learn that there are bad things. يعني تحبس ابنك طول العمر في الدار فجأة يطلع هيك لاقي الدنيا مش عارف كيف. خليه ينتهي. بس ما يكونش في فترة فترات part of this badness. حتى إنه badness هذه نسبية. Anyway, imagination. Always imagine different endings to things. Imagine. People differently. Imagine, go beyond what you see and what you hear. Writing, I use this to this metaphor to describe writing, but a text. But I want to use it to describe uh, writing and to describe people as well. You know the iceberg. There's an idiom, by the way. You know what the iceberg is? Yes. It's a mountain of ice. In the sea or the ocean, you know this is uh, the mountain that uh, kind of mountain that the Titanic hit. Yes. But yes. it's nothing. It's a small tip. It's just the tip. But deep inside the hidden part, huge part. I think there's an idiom in English that says it's a, it's the tip of the iceberg. We want to listen to literally. واحد بيجاوب على سؤال بقول له اه بقول والله هيك شاطرة بس هي ما هيك عارف الكلمة هذه كان بقول لي ستيب اوف ذا ايس بيرج يعني لسه ما شفتش حاجة مني تحت السواهي دواهي ستيل ووتر رانج بيبول ار لايك ذيس وي ار اول لايك ذيس وي شو ا تايني بيت اوف اور سيلفز بس وات از هيدن ماي باست وات اي ثينك اوف هاو اي بيهيف هاو اي اكت اراوند ماي فاملي ماي فريندز ماي انيميز نو وان مش مرة عطا أقول له أصلاً شفتك تضحك في الشارع قلت له أصلاً صورتني عشان يعني I I never laugh we usually tend to think of people in one particular way which is horrible حنشوف later this is important to fiction اعتبروا الشخصية السطحية that begins and ends like a poor shallow character وأنا كنت Uh, a person we know that we th we hate very much. Think of this. Think of the people you hate very much, for example. Are there people who love them? Yes. Why? You're going to be different, by the way. If you hate taxi drivers, for example, think of them at home. Think of their families. Think of why they want to act this horribly. One of the